Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. And we are back. This is Talking Books and Writing and Stuff, and we're talking about writing and stuff and singing and other things with Tommy John Eamon from, let's call it, South Central Saskatchewan, around the Craig Davidson area. So, TJE, uh, wow, it's been kind of a strange year for everybody. How did you survive it all? Oh, man, you know. We got through it, and we're we're still hanging in there. It's been, you know, as far as musically goes, it's been a slow year. I mean, we've been trying to keep as busy as we can, but without the live shows, you know, that puts a big dent in, you know, your activities as a musician. So, you know, as far as that goes, it's been, you know, a trying year to say the least. But, you know, we're hanging in there, and we're just, you know, we're getting vaccinated, and we're hoping for the best here coming up this summer and into the fall. Well, that's uh, the thing about being a, a prairie person is that you're uh, always hoping that there's going to be a next year. Isn't that the thing? It's next year country. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. You know, we always, at least we try to keep, you know, look on the bright side, you know, the glass half full type thing. And, you know, that's what we're doing. You know, I mean, it's because you can look at this whole pandemic as it's, it's, it's not just us. It's not just rural Saskatchewan. It's not just Saskatchewan. It's not even just Canada. I mean, it's the whole world dealing with it. So we're just trying to do our part, and we're all trying to get through it. And this is Tommy John Eamon here on uh, Talking Books and Stuff. And it's actually his second appearance here. It was about a year and a half or, ago or so where we first uh, encountered Tommy John and went through his musical history. But uh, right now, these days, um, burning up the charts is your version of Hungry Heart. So how's that doing for you? been doing pretty well i mean it's it's a tough road to hoe as an independent artist to get your music played on the top radio stations in the country and we know that with all our songs but you know we persevere because we love what we're doing and you just never know that one song that might come along but you know we've been getting a lot of press and we've been getting a lot of airplay and you know everybody knows this song and it's a fun song and you know that that's kind of what we were just hoping to do is bring a little a little cheer to everybody with this one. So it's, it's been doing pretty well. We can't complain at all. Now that's Hungry Heart by, of course, Bruce Springsteen. So why again did you select this one to release? You know, I think this is, this is a song that, you know, I played for a long time in, in the cover bands. And, you know, even with our, our band, you know, we would throw it in now and again. And it's always been a song that went over really well with people. And, you know, it's a kind of a sing-along song. And just just something that, you know, I don't really know why, you know, I just decided to do it. I just think it was just, uh, just like a gut feeling. I just, yeah, I think I'm just going to do a cover song. You know, as a songwriter, you know, I've done all my recordings have been my songs. But, you know, every once in a while, even even the big artists, you know, do a cover song once in a while. And I just felt like it was just time to do one. And it was just it's one of my favorite songs. And there's so many that a guy could have chosen from or picked this or that. Or, you know, there's so many different genres that you could pick your song out of. So it was just kind of just... It just became that song. Tommy John Eamon is with us, musician, singer, songwriter from Saskatchewan. Latest release is Hungry Heart, the old, uh, old I'll call it old, uh, Bruce Springsteen song. Uh, TJ, I've always liked that song, but I always wish it had one more verse, because to me the story just <laughs> abruptly ends, and I, I wish it had gone on a little bit longer. That's so... Well, what? You know, yeah, you know, you're right. Like, what what actually happens in the end? But I, you know, like, does he go back to his wife and kids? You know, like, what exactly happens? But I guess in in music, a lot of times, I guess, because I think of the same thing in a lot of different songs or when I'm watching a movie or a TV show. Well, how does it end? But I guess that's, you know, where we use our imaginations to kind of build our own ending. So I guess we got to build our own ending done each of our own ending on Hungry Heart. <laughs> well, everybody's got a hungry heart. Um, now, speaking of Bruce Springsteen with Tommy John Eamon here, um, apparently bass player Gary Talent was involved in some of your recordings. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, when we did the uh, Wheels of Life album, which we recorded in, 
late 2007 and then into 2008 because it came out in late 2008. So, yeah, we were, uh, at that time, the producer, Brad Prosto, who actually produced Hungry Heart, was had been done some work with uh, Gary Talent and an act that he was producing, and they were coming through Canada, and Brad had them in his studio, so he got to meet Gary. And when I came to Brad with these songs at that time from Wheels of Life, he said, you know, these are kind of that sort of genre. Would you be interested in having Gary Talent play? Because I've been working with him. I said, wow, sure, why not? I said, <laughs> yeah, he's not likely going to do it, but, you know, we can always ask. <laughs> and, um, you know, so Brad asked him, and he, he agreed to do it. So it was, you know, we got to go to Montana, and we recorded at a studio there when he was living there. And, yeah, it was like, yeah, that's probably right at the, one of the top, coolest moments of my musical career so far we got to meet and hang out with gary talent for a couple of cool days in in the some spring of 2008 well that'd be like you know having a connor mcdavid show up for your uh, senior c uh, <laughs> beer league team hey you guys uh connor mcdavid wants to play with you is that okay well only if he, <laughs> yeah, only if he wants right. to you know we, we we don't know who this guy is but we'll let him play if he wants <laughs> so yeah so, yeah, when, in comparison between music and hockey, that's about right. You know, it's one of the top dogs, and, you know, they know their stuff, and they're really, really good at what they do. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. So Tommy John Eamon is with us. This is our second visit, like we said, singer-songwriter from Saskatchewan. Um, looking back or going back to your musical uh, history, do you recall the first actual record you ever purchased? Yes, I do, actually. It's, you know, it's a while ago now, because... You know, the years have come up behind me, but <laughs> I think it was 77 or 78, I bought, with my own money, an album called Old Habits by Hank Williams Jr. Ah. And, you know, it was an LP, an actual record. Yep. And that was the first record that I ever bought with my own money. And then I think it wasn't too long after that when I bought Waylon's Greatest Hits. Um, I think that was on, I think that was a cassette that I had bought. And then from there, you know, then it gets a little bit foggy, but I, I'll never forget, and I still have it, too, is that Old Habits by Hank Williams Jr. Oh, that's a great one. Uh, and then you, when did you actually pick up the guitar and start uh, getting serious with it? When was that? Yeah, I think I was maybe in that, well, probably around that same time when I bought that album, actually, in that, you know, 14, 15 range. You know, I don't even, you know, you think about it, you know, why did I start playing guitar? I had liked to sing. I was always somebody that sang all the time, and I just wanted to be able to accompany myself. So I thought, i got to learn a few chords on the guitar. And like everyone else, you start off, and you can't do it, and it's frustrating, and but all of a sudden, you get a chord or two. And now, if you want to get three chords, you know, you can play so many songs. It just, you know, there's so many three-chord songs out there. So that was that was really the motivation at that time, just so I could... So I could sing some songs and, you know, at that time it was mostly cover songs, but then I started writing songs and, it, you know, I guess from there it just became a snowball effect and it's just something that's never left. And that was a Hank Williams Jr. record that you're talking about, your first one. So is that your, that kind of music, your biggest musical influences at that time? Yeah, at that time for sure. Um, um I had started listening to country music when most of my friends were listening to pop music and I was in that, you know, 15, 16 year old range. And, you know, they all thought I was nuts for listening to country music. But, you know, at that time, who were the big stars? It was Waylon and Willie and Hank Jr. and Mickey Gilly. And I can't even remember them all. And Donna Fargo and, you know, Tammy Wynette a little bit too. And just all those stars at that time. And, you know, those are the ones who were being playing on the, playing on the radio on the country station. So, that kind of, you know, got me really into it. And I don't know, just, I just really connected with that music and it, you know, and again, you know, it's just something that you, you just kind of have inside of you and it just stays with you for seemingly forever. Tommy John Eamon, he was country before country was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Barbara Mandrell, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I was like, my friends were like, what are you listening to that garbage for? But you know, it wasn't <laughs> long and before some of them were listening to it too. Cause they, hey, this stuff's not so bad after all. I always thought that country music, I'm not, to put it down because I love it too is is but compared to let's say popular rock music it seemed to be about 10 years behind 
in, in the way the musical style and stuff. And now yeah. it seems to have diverted yeah. a bit, but it all, it, which was fine with me. I mean, that, I didn't mind that at all, but. Yeah, I, I think that's true. It just seems to be like the pop music, maybe, you know, they, they, they introduce the new trends and whatever, and maybe country music, you know, they're a little bit behind and then they sneak in the back door and then they start doing it too. And then you start hearing it on country radio. So yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with that. But of course, if you go way back, you've got, um, Carl Perkins and Jerry Lee Lewis and Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley, the Million Dollar Quartet. That was kind of, they played on all the country shows, the Louisiana Hayride and things like that. So mm -hmm. it started yeah, together and, and then blended and, off. And weren't they, con yeah, and weren't they considered kind of, you know, like Elvis was rock music and, you know, Carl Perkins and Jerry Lee Lewis. And, you know, if you listen to country stations now, you'll hear those songs on there. Oh, exactly. So it, it's sort of full circle. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when did you actually become come a touring musician? Uh, what was the first band you actually toured with? Oh, I was it was I was twenty I was twenty four I think you know I'd been playing in bands locally. My bass player now that plays with me, Rob Eamon, who's a cousin of mine, in the band, and uh, we'd been playing around locally in our our area. And then I just got this urge to go. You know, at that time, there was all these bands playing in all these clubs around Western Canada, and I kind of heard tell that it was pretty darn cool. So <laughs> I wanted to do it, so I put my name up in the music store as a singer-guitar player looking to join a band, and they gave me a call one day, and I went to Saskatoon, and I met another musician named David Evans, and we talked for a while and decided we'd give it a try, and I went on the road that fall. And with a band, at that time, they were called Top Notch, and then they became, shortly after we changed the name to Midnight Highway, and we two or three straight years as Midnight Highway, just everywhere in Western Canada, from north, south, east, and west, all over the place. Now is my, my introduction to music, right from, you know, just playing here and there on the weekends to six nights a week in nightclubs around Western Canada. It was it was a great time. I remember that those days back while well, living in Vancouver at the time, but um, the bands, would, would they get you, would they put you up in a house or something for the week? Yeah, there was lots of places that had band houses. And then, there, you know, if they didn't have band houses, they had, if they were uh, hotels with uh, a nightclub, then they'd have four or five rooms that were designated for the band every week. Or other places that were standalone, then they would they'd get some rooms at a hotel. But a lot of them did have band houses. And let me tell you, most of them weren't very nice. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> and did, yeah. they, did you actually get paid? How did you get paid? How was the business stuff handled in those days? Yeah, there'd be a band leader that would, you know, kind of at that time, David Evans was the band leader of that first band. So he'd be just in discussions with at that time, there was agents that were kind of running the whole circuit and they would book bands and they'd have their, maybe they'd have five or 10 clubs in the circuit and they would book bands through there so that they'd get a 15% cut and then the bands would get the rest. And generally speaking, you'd get paid on Saturday night and then you'd ship some off to the agent and then you'd split some up between the band and then you'd put gas in the vehicle and drive to the next place. I mean, we weren't getting rich, but I mean, I was young and I had no family and I, I didn't need a lot of money. I wasn't even paying rent anywhere at that time. So, you know, if I made two, three hundred bucks a week, sometimes we had a really good week. We might make five hundred bucks. You wow. know, it didn't, it didn't really matter. The money was just the money. Yeah, it was just it kept you like you say on gas and uh, soft drinks. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, soft drinks, lots of soft drinks. <laughs> to, Tommy John Eamon Eman is with us. This is our second visit here on Talking Books and Stuff. Hungry Heart, a record that's out right now. Uh, you have lots of other music. So where can we find your music, Tommy John? Yeah, I mean, I'm in most of the uh, general haunts that all the artists are on these days with the Spotify's and the, the Apple Music and everything. And to get to those, I mean, literally you can, because I've done this myself, just out of curiosity's sake, I've just Googled my name and just to see what comes up. And you know, if you Google Tommy John Eamon, you get your Spotify's and your Apple Music and all that kind of stuff. Plus my official website, TommyJohnEamon.net, and then there's all kinds of stuff there and links to all the social media and all the there's places where my music is streaming and where you can be, where it can be downloaded and all that. And, you know, there's quite a bit of music now over the years. So, you know, if you find me, there's, there's a fair bit of music to listen to. So you can find out what, what I've been doing all these years, songwriting and recording. 
And that's TommyJohnEman.net, Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y, John, J-O-H-N, Eman, E-H-M-A-N, TommyJohnEman.net, singer, songwriter. You play the guitar, do you play any other instruments? Um, I can play a teeny tiny bit of mandolin, I know a few chords, so I can do a little bit of that, and I play the harmonica, which I'm not, I'm no, like, uh, Mickey Raphael from the Willie Nelson band, but I can, I can play a little bit of harmonica, too, so... Uh, you know, it's more so, I mean, I play it with the band, but I play it a little bit more, say, with the acoustic shows and put the harness on and play guitar and play the harmonica. So those are my two. I've often thought that I kind of should have been learning piano more or so over the years, but I just never really have. But there's still time. I might do that, yeah. So it's mostly guitar and harmonica. And so for the coming year, Tommy John Eamon, you're just hoping that things get better and you get to get out on the road a bit more and play some more uh, dates and record some more music. Is that pretty much what's in store? Yeah, you know, there's some enthusiasm amongst the uh, artists around that, you know, we're getting our vaccines and I've, you know, I've had a couple conversations with some club owners that are hoping that they can maybe book some things in this fall. And we do have a couple of acoustic shows that are coming up. So, I mean, we have a few things, but yeah, and, you know, I do have, we are recording still during the pandemic. So I have a couple of songs that, our one is done and the other one is very close to being done. So pretty soon we're going to have another song out for the summer. And yeah, we're just going to keep writing and keep hanging in there, writing and hoping that some more dates come up and, you know, try to keep, uh, you know, keep our hand in the music and, you know, hopefully, hopefully things open up here pretty quick. And hopefully it gets a, a few bushels in the bin by the time this is all over. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My son, he's out just now. We were just out at the, at the tractor here about an hour ago and then he's out seeding and he, I, I took him out some things that he wanted and he's got on the tractor. And goes, oh, Jesus dry out here, dad. And I go, yeah, I know, but you got to put the seed in the ground because it's going to rain and it's going to come up. You know, I'm always, I'm always trying to be positive because that's what you have to be when you're a farmer, you that's know, right. or a musician, you or, know, I mean, they go hand in hand. Or a so, musician yeah. or an actor or a writer, you know, you, look on a movie yeah. screen or something and you see a guy as a big star and he 40 years ago he was a nobody or he or she but uh so tommy yep tommy, that's great tommy john eman tommy john eman dot net look it up get his music and tommy john good luck to you and maybe we'll again we'll get another conversation next year at this time how's that sound yeah that sounds good i enjoy it it's, it's a lot of fun to do this and i appreciate how coming on and you know, helping to promote my music and, you know, artists and things around this province and around the world. So uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we've had your sister on twice and now we've had you on twice. So there's, there's some kind of pattern oh. developing here. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. I was wondering if Amy Jo was going to be on again. Yep. That's good. Yeah. She's a, she's doing really well in her own right too. So congratulations to her too. Okay. Tommy John Eamon, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks Dennis. Thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh.